Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in Matthew chapter 11, verse 10, Isaiah chapter 4, verse 6, and James chapter 2, verse 11. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for keeping us and guiding us on this path day to day. Lord God, thank you for your word. Lord Jesus, let this word bless people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Matthew chapter 11, verse 10. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. All right. And so this is Jesus speaking of Jesus, you know, the prophecy um, was speaking of Jesus and he's quoting um, the book of Malachi. It's the third chapter. Um, I want to say it's the first verse. Um, And so it, it talks about the fact that God was going to send a messenger who was the forerunner for Jesus, um, the one who would um, call out that the king is coming, right? He would prepare the people's heart and mind to receive the king. Um, he would prophesy and and speak to the people and let them know the word of God and, and, and get the people's hearts ready to receive the Messiah. All right. And so um, Jesus here is quoting Malachi and talking about John the Baptist's role, right, as the one who would prepare the way from for the king. And so um, we know that that's what he did. That was the role that he fulfilled. Um, but as a reflection, when we're looking at this, we are reminded that um, here, even in this teaching, um, Christ referred to um, John the Baptist as an Elijah, right? Um, the Elijah that was to, is to come. And so um, he's coming back, right? Um, when Jesus is going to make his uh, second return, his return to the earth, and when he comes, it's going to be uh, the king is coming, right? To set up his kingdom. And so before the king comes the second time, he is going to come again, right? This Elijah, this John the Baptist, this forerunner for the king. And so um, we know that they are going to preach and prophesy um, for three and a half years. Right. And so that's the second um, um, half of the tribulation. And so the Lord is wanting to let us know they are coming. Right. Those 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 two witnesses are coming um, and they are going to prepare the way for the king's arrival. They are going to prepare the way for the arrival of the Lord. Um, and, and it's going to be a great and terrible day when he comes for many people. But for those people who have chosen Christ, who have chosen to come under um, this covering, um, they are they are going to be under his protection right? They are going to have received him into their heart. These people of the tribulation who have not allowed um, themselves to receive the mark, who have resisted, who have fleed, who have followed God. And so here in Isaiah chapter four, verse six, it says, there will be a booth for shade by day from the heat and for a refuge and shelter from the storm and rain. All right. And so this is speaking of um, the fact that after Jesus does come. Right. So we have this Elijah, um, these these two witnesses um, who are going to prepare the way for the Lord. And then the Lord is going to come right in his second coming. That is considered his second coming. Remember, because his foot actually touches the earth right at the Mount of Olives. But remember the rapture he is not is not considered a coming because we go up to him in the clouds. And so um 
here at this second coming, um, this booth for shade by day from the heat, this is a covering over, um, the the new Mount Zion right and so this area where um, God's people will be these people who will need shelter right in in this new earth um he they're going to need help they're going to need an inheritance they're going to need um something and so this canopy this covering this booth is going to be over Jerusalem and so it says there will be a booth for shade by day from the heat and for a refuge and shelter from the storm and rain and so there won't be any more exposure because many of these people will have been exposed many of them will have been um starving right and and he's going to provide that shelter he is going to provide that covering um from the storm and from the rain all right and he's going to make sure that they are taken care of why because they're on his side and so um, they have received Christ into their hearts and they have washed themselves in the blood of the lamb, right? And so now he's covering them when he comes that second time. All right. And so that third scripture is James chapter two, verse 11. For he who said, do not commit adultery also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. All right. And so here, um, this is speaking of the, James is talking about um, the fact that when we are trying to abide in the law and not abide in Christ, we're always going to fail right? Why? Because when you're trying to abide in the law, you're not following the right leader. The, remember, the law is unable to produce righteousness, right? It, it can't actually make you right. It can point out your wrongs, but it cannot make you right. Um, only Jesus can make you right. You need his blood, the atoning blood of Christ. And so we know that those who are in the tribulation will have washed their garments in the blood of the lamb. And so because of that, they are, they will be clean. Their garments will be white. And so, um, this process, um, it, it, we, we never, um, um, downplay the law. The law is used to show us the standards of God. And so we need the law, but, but we don't need to abide by the law. We abide by Christ, right? We stay close to God by staying close to Christ, right? And so, um, as we as we walk with Christ, as we walk out this walk, as we read the word, as we consume the word and let his blood cleanse us um, from all unrighteousness, it is that blood that is actually taking away the sin. So it's important um, for these people of tribulation, these people who will not have the spirit to guide them, right? Um, and, and so they're going to need uh, to have a way to be clean right but guess what Christ died once for all sin right and so that's still going to be true in the tribulation right and so there's not going to be a God to lead them and guide them into all truth but Jesus will still be Jesus Jesus atonement will still cover um, a multitude of sins Jesus atonement is still available for those people who are in the tribulation but they're not going to be able to achieve that atonement or receive that atonement by um following the law, right? They're going to need to abide in Christ. They're going to need his blood to be poured on them. Um, they need to be submerged into his death, right? Um, and, and because of that, their garments are going to be cleansed, right? God is, is going to allow his work inside of them through Christ Jesus's blood, 
right? And so it is it is the blood that is the sacrifice. Remember, the blood um, atones, right? Remember, the blood carries the, the spirit of the person, the life force of the person. And so when Christ was... Um, the atonement and he was laid on that altar of the cross he atoned for all of our sins past present and future because he was perfect right when his blood was shed he was completely perfect there was no sin or stain in him and so when he was laid on the cross um and he died for us um that was the the cleansing that was necessary to allow us into the presence of God that was the cover that was necessary right because somebody had to pay for the sin and so that is the same um is that it's going to be the same for those who are in the tribulation they are going to have to um allow that blood cleansing to take place um in order to to be a part of God's presence right and so um, it says for he who said do not commit adultery also said do not murder all right and so we know that adultery is cheating right adultery is is making commitments with your body um to others when you are committed by marriage or some other way and you have not been released from that marriage right and so by death or or um that person divorcing um the other person and moving on to another marriage and so we know that um that is the law right and so what he's talking about is the law right he's actually talking about the law and so the law itself is not going to be able to cleanse you right the law itself is not going to be able to um, do anything for you except let you know where you're wrong you need the cleansing power of Christ, right? Unless the first husband is dead, you can't move on, right? You can't, and remember the first husband, whenever you're talking about the first husband, you're talking about the law. When you're talking about the first redeemer, you're talking about the law, right? You need that second redeemer. You need Christ, right? You can't, you can't be committing adultery. You can't say you're with Christ, but you're following all these rules and you're not actually following Christ. You need to abide in Christ and his covering in that relationship with, with his blood. And so it says for he who said, do not commit adultery also said, do not murder. And so we know that murder to murder is to take the life of another person, right? That is the law. And so if if you are, are walking in a way that is walking away from God, right? You are participating in the murder of Christ, right? But, you, you, but if you come close to him, you're participating in receiving the blood of the atonement, right? We don't want to be people of the law. We want to be people of relationship. We want to not just, because remember when the people crucified Christ, they, they, they thought they were following the law. They thought that they were um, doing the right thing. They thought that they were in the right position, but because they didn't have the spirit that was behind the law, um, they didn't have relationship with God they they were doing things that were written, you know, but they didn't have any discretion or discernment, right? They needed a relationship with God, right? And so God decided, hey, I'm going to send my son. I'm going to send my son and I'm going to build that relationship between myself and man by creating a perfect atonement situation where they could come directly to me. Right. And so God sent his son. And, and and that's that's the theme throughout 
um, the rest of the word is that he cares so much for us. He wants us to be covered. Look at that previous verse. There will be a booth for shade by day from the heat and for a refuge and shelter from the storm and rain. He's providing shelter. He's providing coverage. Even in the millennium, he's providing um, all this love and care right? And, and, you know, he's preparing the way for his son to come again, but we need to make sure that we are in an abiding situation when Christ comes both, um, to meet us in the air and not at his second coming, but to meet us in the air, as well as for those people who are in the tribulation, we need the blood, right? We need the blood. We need the cleansing and atoning blood of Christ. And that's what those people of the tribulation are going to need as well. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for helping us to hear your voice through your word, Lord God. Bless these people who will be in tribulation, Lord God. Touch their hearts, touch their minds, even now, Lord God. Help them to begin to see you, Lord God. And, and when the tribulation comes, Lord God, help them to deny the, the Antichrist, um, his desires. Lord God, help them to turn towards you and begin to fulfill the things that you want in their lives. Lord God, the sacrifices that you want them to make. Lord Jesus, help them, keep them, Lord God. Help them not to just tr or try to stay with the law. Help them to stay with your blood. Lord God, let them cleanse their garments in your blood. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.